day headlines and at the bigger picture. Question number two, the Honourable Simon Bridges. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister, and we warmly welcome you back. Does she stand by all her government's policies and actions? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. <coughs> Mr Speaker, I'm nothing if not consistent. Yes. <laughs> Some things don't change. Mr Speaker. Or, order, order. I think, I think that's sort of now 2-1 in the out of order comments, and we'll just get back to the questions. Supplementary question. When she dismissed business confidence yesterday as perceptions and said, I'm interested in the reality of what our economy is doing and how it is performing, had she then seen yesterday's report from Treasury that stated, quote, weaker confidence in conjunction with other data highlight the risk that growth over the coming fiscal year may be weaker than forecast in the budget? Um, Mr Speaker, um, uh, I would not characterise uh, that as dismissal at all. I hear what business is saying in the same way I hear what nurses have said, right. what teachers have That's said, right. which anyone who works in the wellbeing space has said around the need to rebuild confidence in New Zealand's social wellbeing That's outcomes right. as much as our economic outcomes. What I will say, Mr Speaker, is I also have to acknowledge the international environment, which is having an effect here in New Zealand, which is why... We need to diversify our economy and make sure that we are not vulnerable, which is exactly the place that last government left us in. Order. Before I, before I call a member, I am going to ask um, David Bennett to go the rest of this question um, and the series of supplementaries and answers without interjecting. Simon Bridges. Well, on the international environment, why is it then that New Zealand is the only country to have gone near the top of, from the near the top of the OECD in business confidence to right near the bottom? Mr Speaker, we're actually a fraction away from the long-term average. And I have to say, when you look at the OECD comparisons around our, um, our growth forecast, actually, we stand up pretty well. That's right. I agree. Does she accept uh, the weaker growth forecast now or, or talked of now by Treasury is the reality, as is a decline in GDP per capita in just the last quarter. Uh, Mr Speaker, if we're going to quote what Treasury have said, let's share the entire picture. Uh, they've said that the housing market was cooling faster than expected. And actually, the housing market was overheated under that last government, and we need to stand up and, and fully confront that and the harm that it was doing New Zealand's people. Secondly, we need to acknowledge the international environment, which Treasury has as well. And at the same time, they've said that labour income, wages, are growing strongly, that employment growth is solid, and uh, that we have issued things like more building consents. If you're going to talk about the economy, let's talk about all of the indicators, not just some of them. On her uh, discussion once again of the international environment and Treasury's view on it, does she not accept that they've said the international environment remains broadly stable? Nothing's changed. Uh, Mr Speaker, if the member is reading the voice of business, like, for instance, I would imagine he would look at the KPMG survey, uh, which has highlighted that that is in, fact having, is, is, in fact, having an impact. So if the member thinks the KPMG survey is babble, does he think that what John Keir said was babble as well? Because he's raised it too. David Seymour. Uh, does the Prime Minister stand by Education Minister Chris Hipkins? statement that the Tertiary Education Commission will have new powers under the Act to monitor the tertiary sector and hold providers to account for their use of public funding. Oh, Mr Speaker, if he's asserting that the Minister of Education is saying that we should strive for high quality tertiary education, then that is no bad thing. Would it be a bad thing if a university failed to use its public funding in alignment with section 161 of the Education Act to uphold academic freedom, such as by refusing to allow speakers to speak on university campuses because of their political views. Oh, uh, Mr Speaker, ultimately institutions have their own freedom on a day-to-day -day basis, but if he's asking me, if he is asking me for a personal opinion, the example I think that he is pointing to, I would characterise as an overreaction on the part of the institution. 
Supplementary question, the Honourable Chris Hopkins. Does the Prime Minister think it is tenable for the government to threaten to cut funding for universities when they make decisions that the government disagrees with? Uh, Mr Speaker, absolutely not. We continue to hold a personal view, and as I say, uh, there are a number of examples where politicians and ex-politicians have caused a stir on university campuses. I think the reaction we've seen has been an overreaction. Will we retaliate? Of course not. Yeah. Does she... Except order, order. Who made that noise? If you're referring to the laugh, that was me. Oh, okay. Thank you. Does she accept the weaker growth foreshadowed by Treasury and the decline in GDP per capita in just the last quarter to be a reality? Oh. Mr Speaker, of course, Treasury has put out its forecast and I acknowledge that, yes, the housing market is called. International uh, tensions have had an effect. But on the flip side, um, if I'm going to accept that, I'm also going to accept the wage growth, which is benefiting New Zealanders, uh, high, un uh, high employment, which is also benefiting New Zealanders, and the fact that we have seen, for instance, a decrease in the number of young people in unemployment. I accept that we have challenges in front of us. That's why we are investing in boost Productivity. It's why we're investing in diversifying our trade. It's why we're investing in R&D. I'm not shying away from those challenges. Somebody question. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. <laughs> uh, regarding the international influence upon New Zealand's economy, is the Prime Minister encouraged by all of a sudden the number of highly placed European Union officials and representations with respect to a free trade deal with the European Union? <laughs> Uh, Mr Speaker, absolutely. Uh, we have a visit today which only further helps us further our relationships and New Zealand's interests. Uh, and I also applaud the work that the Minister of Trade is doing on our trade for all alongside negotiating PESA, RCEP, the EU FTA. We are moving at pace because growing exports grows jobs. Does she accept a 60 per cent decline in job growth since your government came into office is a reality for the thousands of New Zealanders who didn't get a job as a result. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, we have 94,000 more people employed at the end of June 2018 than there were in June 2017. Our unemployment rate has decreased. So the member is picking a figure, uh, interpreting it in the way that he chooses, but I'm proud of the fact that we are putting people into jobs. Does she accept a 4,000 person increase in unemployment in just three months to be a reality for those families? Ah. Mr Speaker, it's down from 4.8. I would first point out the second point that I would make is that we have seen a rise in participation. Uh, more people moving into the job market, market because I would interpret that to be that they see hope that there are jobs and work available for them. The ANZ job ads uh, indicate that that is indeed the case. Does she accept more industrial strikes in the last nine months? than the last nine years to be a reality for those businesses and workers. Uh, Mr Speaker, I, I just want to highlight today we've also concluded the nurses' um, pay yeah. agreement, which is something that I'd like to celebrate. And Mr Speaker, I, I, uh, you're welcome. We concluded that after inheriting it halfway through. We concluded it because we doubled the offer. We addressed the safety concerns. And just as we have with teachers, we've already scrapped national standards. We've brought in more funding for teacher aides and for those with learning needs, and we have increased their operational funding. There is more to do, but we've done more in nine months than that government did in nine years. Does she accept the collapse of multiple construction companies to be a reality for those businesses, their workers, in the customers. Mr Speaker, uh, look, absolutely we've acknowledged that's happened. That's why we sat down with the construction, the vertical construction industry yesterday. I acknowledge that it's a very different case for the residential uh, and those working in infrastructure because they're seeing a huge boost in investment out of this government in those sectors. When it comes to vertical, vertical construction, it's 18 per cent 
of the work for that industry comes from government. Even though we represent only 18 per cent, we are fronting up and saying if we can play a leadership role to ensure that we do not have a further collapse in this sector, we will play it. That's what this government has done. We haven't gone far enough with the reforms of the last government, and we are again happy to pick up the pieces. Does she think there will be real impacts for New Zealanders from us having the lowest business confidence since the global financial crisis, while in Australia it's at a 30-year high? Oh, Mr Speaker, Australia is a 30-year high, and yet we're outperforming them on things like an employment rate. On things like the employment rate, we absolutely are. And Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, we have the third highest rate of employment in the OECD. We have, we have steady economic growth, and according to the ODCD, at 3 per cent, the same as Australia going into 2019. Where we don't sit on the same page of Australia is our low wages, and we're doing something about that too. Is the Prime Minister seriously denying that in Australia right now they are growing faster than us for the first time in several years, their business confidence is at a 30-year high while ours is at 10-year low, and that there are more New Zealanders leaving for Australia net than there have been for some quite some considerable time. Mr Speaker, what I am arguing is that if we're going to look at the health of our economy, uh, then we should look at a range of indicators. Employee confidence is up. Job ads is up. Consents is up. Unemployment. We have incredibly low unemployment in this country. We have 94,000 more people in work. And, and we have on average over $70 going into the back pockets of working New Zealanders and those in need, which is of course is stimulating our economy. Mr Speaker, I'm proud of the changes we're making. We need to modernise our economy and we are working hard on doing just that as well. Does she accept any responsibility in terms of her government's policies, such as industrial relations reform, shutting down the oil and gas sectors in terms of new exploration, higher taxes and banning foreign investment, and the hurt they're causing business confidence and therefore the direct impact they're having for families all around New Zealand? Mr Speaker, look, as I've said, I absolutely acknowledge that business have shared with us via the confidence surveys that there are issues they wish us to work on. I've heard that. And when you ask business what it is, they say to us it is the skills gap, so we've invested in training and educating our workforce, and business can access that just as much as anyone else. They've told us that it's our productivity challenge. They've told us that it's that we're not investing in R&D. We have told us that we've underinvested in the regions, which is why we have the Provincial Growth Fund. They've told us it's because we need to modernise our economy and the challenges of climate change, which is why we have the Green Investment Fund. Mr Speaker, I acknowledge, as with any Labour uh, led government in the past, this coalition government needs to challenge the perception that exists. I'm not shying away from that challenge, and that's why I'm fronting it head on. Isn't the Prime Minister in complete denial about our economy's reality and any number that any of us could pick and her government's policies impact? And doesn't she need to start listening to businesses, small and large, around New Zealand and make some serious changes. Mr Speaker, as I've said, I've acknowledged every single economic indicator that tells us we have a lot to be proud of. And I also acknowledge, I also acknowledge, and I also acknowledge 94,000 more New Zealanders in work, something to be proud of. If that member wants to go around dissing our economy and the potential that exists in this country, that, Mr Speaker, I have to say, is a damn shame. Question number three, the Honourable Amy Adams. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the